snob this week. <laughs> you were called a wine snob. I really? was. Okay. Well, I've, I've had people say that to me before, but I generally dismiss it out of hand when I get told that. But uh, interesting that someone would call you a wine snob when you yes. drink something on block. Exactly. Uh, wine snobs don't drink something on block. So uh, you could say to them, listen, you know, how much of a wine snob do you think I really am? Wow, the passion fruit is just incredible. It is, yeah. It jumps up at you. It's. Uh, Pretty typical of what you expect from that style of wine. And, um, South Island Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc 2012. Okay, well, there's the key, 2012. As we always say, you want it young, you want it fresh. And if you're gonna be drinking Sauvignon Blanc, you want it to be as full of life and as full of zest as it can be, and so you want it as young as you get it. If you see a range of them on the shelf, and you saw 10, 11, and 12, you pick the 12. Absolutely fantastic. And, and that's that got is, all the passion fruit. It's absolutely. Got, absolutely. It's got all the life that you want and uh, great seafoody type match, uh, perfect with oysters and fish and chips on the beach, no problem. A salad with oil and vinegar. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. cuts through Seasons that oil, salad. doesn't it? Yep, yeah, it would. Absolutely beautiful. Now, the next one, uh, I'm rather excited about this, uh, this Chardonnay. Now, this is a Mornington Peninsula Chardonnay, <laughs> 2012, so it's a very young Chardonnay. Yeah, so it's pretty new as well. By Stoning. Okay, well, yeah, good wine these guys make normally. Um, they uh, are Mornington Peninsula specialists. They're also, I guess, best known for their Burgundian wines, if you like, uh, and by saying that the grapes come from Burgundy. So Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, that's what they do, and they do it pretty well. Um, wow, peaches, big peaches yeah. and, and a nutty sort of... A Stone fruits. Stone fruits, um, a bit of oak in there, but good oak. Um, and it's got a bit of the Estonia uh, signature about that. The, the Chardonnays always have an element of creaminess about them. Mm. Um, and this one, maybe not as pronounced as previous vintages that I have tried, but that's just because it's so new. It's young. It'll come up. Um, and yeah, if you maybe just bought a bit of that and left it sitting around for about 18 months or so, that creaminess would start to manifest itself more readily on, on, on the nose and beautiful structure, really, that's good Chardonnay. That's a Chardonnay drinker's Chardonnay. With that fruity, that peachiness, because I, I, I sense quite a lot of peach in there. Yeah. Would yeah. that still um, uh, hold yeah, after yeah, a bit yeah. of age as well? Well, there's enough acid in there, see, that's the key to any wine really as far as aging goes, it's got to have acid and that's got plenty of acid, but it's all well balanced, oh, so right. yeah, balance, it's very is, well balance balanced. is the key and you need acid to live and that, that will keep. Absolutely beautiful. Next one we've got here, this is uh, D'Arenberg, mm -hmm. uh, McLaren Vale, um, Diary's Original Cherez Grenache. Okay. Looking forward to this. <laughs> well, <coughs> this is 2010 as well. So Okay, so great vintage. Um, D'Arenberg are, I guess, flag bearers for the McLaren Vale area, just as Estonia. Uh, their, their flag bearers from Mornington. Well, wow. Darenberg, they make a lot of different wine. Darenberg, Huge they, fruit on the nose there. Yeah, yeah, they make, <laughs> I think a, a few years ago, they, somebody said to me, they make more wines than there are days of the month. And mm. uh, I think it was about four or five years ago, I remember going through their portfolio and there were some over 30 wines then, and they've added plenty more since. So <laughs> wow. uh, they've got a lot of different wines. This though is their, I guess their go-to wine, because it's named after their, their, their boss man. Darry Osborne is the owner and you know, fourth, fifth generation, whatever. This is his wine, it's got his wine on the label, so they don't move like this stuff. Yeah, lovely wine. Big fruity uh, characteristics on the nose, yep. big fruity characteristics on the palate, but there's some nice tannin there as well. Oh ah, yeah, uh, yep, yep. Which I sense um, when I get that in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And um, absolutely beautiful wine. Mm. Big structure. Uh, that, that is a, a bit of a Darenberg signature as well, that tannic grip. They seem to have that, that's part of what they do, mm -hmm. right across the range. And you're not necessarily going to expect it in a wine that is um, you know, nearly half Grenache, but that's part of what they do, and that'll keep too. If you I didn't to sense it. too much of the Grenache there, but lovely no, wine. No. Okay, next one we've got is uh, Serafino. Now this is a McLaren Vale. Grenache, Cherez, Mataro, 2011, and okay. this one's uh, won some medals here. Uh, it's got a bit of, uh, as the young folks in the uh, in the shop would say, it's got a bit of bling on the label. Yeah, it's a bit all of that, bling. All, <laughs> all those gold medals and trophies. Well, 
2011, as we've said before, a cooler vintage, uh, much maligned um, by the wine snobs. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, interesting, you, you say here too, Grenache, Shiraz, Mataro. So that's your classic GSM combination in that order. And interesting that they use Mataro, as we've said before. Um, you know, the, the, the winemakers uh, in Australia are always used to call the great Mataro. Then it became called Muverdra, because that's the French name. Now a lot of them are going back to Mataro. But I, I sense a little bit more uh, that, uh, I mean, there, there is the Shiraz fruit, the big dark berry mm -hmm. fruits there, but I get some of that lolly shop uh, on the nose. A little bit of musk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a bit of that confectionery character, mm -hmm. but not in a deleterious sort of way. It's not in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a classic cooler climate style, almost a European style of wine that you get in a lot of those 2011s. I get it more distinctively on the palate there's, as well. There's a bit of spice there as well. Yep. You don't generally associate with McLaren Vale Grenache, but lovely Grenache right? basically. But that, that's a good wine and a good food wine. You'd have that with your um, yeah, your sort of gourmet sausages and, and fried onions and all that really healthy stuff, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Sounds healthy to me. <laughs> all right, next one we've got here, Pete, is the uh, Penfolds. Penfolds, uh, <coughs> this is a 2008 oh, right. um, Bin 138. Now mm -hmm. it's a Cherez, Mavodre, and they still have Mavodre on the, uh, uh, on the label, label well. and, the gra and Grenache. So they, you've got the grapes in a different order there as you, as you pick yes. up on. So that, the Cherez being uh, theoretically the most dominant uh, character, then the Mavodre, and then the Grenache. Interesting, like I said before, with the previous one with the Serafino, how they've called it Mataro. The latest release of this one, I think from memory 2011, that we looked at earlier in the year, it's got Mataro. So mm -hmm. even even Penfolds have said, okay, well, we're Australian, we don't need to be using French uh, wine names or grape names on our label. So they use Mavedra at this point, but by the time the current one comes out, they've gone back to Mataro. Wow. Wow, I get so much more on the palate. It just seems to be so evenly balanced. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I've got this picture in my my head of a of a plaque or a braid, you know how, and that's <laughs> an even like that. Uh, so, yeah. and, and Bit it's of complexity just happening. Yeah. Absolutely well, beautiful. Again, you could look at that and think, in a sense, the hallmark of this type of wine is that uh, you want the whole to be greater than the sum of the parts. Oh, you know, the idea is that, yes, you could pick out some Shiraz or maybe I can see some Vivedra, a bit of dry herbs, maybe a bit of Molly Shop Grenache, but the overall impression ought to be of a complete wine with all of those parts coming together. Yes. Uh, and and yeah, they do get, such a great job of it. Well, they do, and you're getting, there's a Penfold stamp all over that. You know, yeah. There's a Penfold's oak, if you like, that you get, but that is a Penfold's wine, and it proudly proclaims that it's a Penfold's wine. A little bit of age, but that's going to go for a while, yeah. Yeah, 08 was a hot vintage, uh, but that's got good structure. You can pick the colour, like it's, there's a little bit of the, the brick red coming through, but um, what, rising five years of age, and that's not going to fall over any time soon. Yeah. All right, the next one we've got here. Now this, uh, I've always wondered about this. Seeing it on the shelf here, Pete. Uh, I, don't, I don't detect that's too serious of a label. Uh, <laughs> duck, duck, goose. Okay. Uh, I think the, the, the goose is the one with the red footprints, and the yeah. ducks uh, run around in circles there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 2012 Barossa mm, Cherez. Indeed. Well, 12 is. Um, we're hearing good things about it. We're just starting to see the 2012s uh, coming on stream. Oh, wow. Obviously. The heavy hitters aren't out there yet. You're not going to be seeing the top labels uh, on the market just yet. But you'd imagine, a lot of Rosa there. Shiraz, yep. You'd imagine from 2012, if that's on the market now, um, in the second half of 2013, you'd expect that it's going to be all about fruit. Mm. There shouldn't be a lot of oak influence getting in the way of that fruit. No, no. no and it interesting. Is. Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely fruity uh, wine, <laughs> but not something I. I wouldn't stick in my cellar, I don't think. No, no, no. Well, you could turn around and say, okay, it'd be a good pizza wine, but then yep. somebody might say you're being a snob if you said being a pizza wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want people calling you a snob, no. Dave. We don't, we don't want anyone calling you a snob. Well, they've started already, Pete, so I... <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> all right, next wine we've got here. Uh, this is an interesting uh, all sorts, a uh, Cabernet. Uh, Shiraz and a Merlot from Western Australia, okay. 2012, Fifth Lake. Yeah, okay, well, the, yeah, this is uh, a very popular label. You can buy Fifth Lake almost anywhere that wine is sold in bottle shops in Australia. Um, it is one of those labels, they started out many moons ago uh, with just a white, and again, it was a bit of everything, and the red closely followed, and it's a bit of everything. 
um, invariably really good fruit, mm. uh, well balanced, made to a formula so that you get what you buy each each time you buy it. Basically, you're getting what you mm. what you got last time. These guys are very progressive. It was uh, originally uh, like a part of the Devil's Lair Empire, and when this label first hit the market, uh, it shows you how long ago it was. Because in the mid '90s, uh, they were still sealed with the cork in those days, All right. and they were very progressive because the cork you'd pull the cork out of the bottle, and it had a website written around the bottom of the cork. That's great. So yeah, so they've always been ahead of the game. These guys, and yeah, you can pick the labels pretty pretty clever. And, quite attractive, stands out on the bottle shop shelf, and uh, and the wine's very consistent. Yeah, again, it's very fruity, yep. um, just like that last one. I get yep. some of that... Uh, this is a 12, isn't it? We said, yes. Yep, 12. So I get yep. some of that black <coughs> currant characteristics, yep. which is the Cabernet, yep. um, and it's a lovely fruity wine. Lots, lots of dark berries. You're getting, you, know, yep. you, could, you could take your pick, like blueberries, blackberries, mulberries, doesn't really matter. It's, yep. But you're getting that berry fruit, and the Cabernet does come through on the nose, so that's what you want in a yep. wine like that. Yep. Absolutely. Now the next one, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a bad uh, Reshki. Now this is a Reshki uh, Kunawara <coughs> Cab Sav okay. 2009. So it's got a little bit of age. Ah uh, yeah, right. Well that's what these fellows do. The, the Reshki wine team, uh, they are known for in fact uh, releasing their wine, not necessarily when it's ready per se, because this, presumably being Cabernet from Kunawara in a good vintage, this will probably hold on for quite a while. I can see some of that age already on that, yeah. in the colour. Yeah. You're getting a bit of brick red uh, sort of colour there, rather than mm. vivid purple hues, as they say. Um, oh, so beautiful. Black current on the nose. Yeah, but you're also getting a little bit of secondary character starting to emerge. It's not yep. just simple one-dimensional fruit character. There's a little bit of complex action there. Um, and you still get a bit of Kunawara mint as well. So you've Beautiful got a, tannin. Yeah, you've, Beautiful got a, tannin. you've got a mix of, I guess, primary fruit character. There's still a bit of that there, but you're starting to get some of the secondary bottle aged character coming through. Um, I don't know, a very good vintage in Kunawara. That'll go for a little while longer, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well, Cabernet, as we often say, Cabernet, of all the great grapes, in the red spectrum, it, it lives longer than the rest. Mm -hmm. Good Cabernet will last longer, as a rule, than good Shiraz. I just got a little bit of that mint oh, yeah. <laughs> across yeah. the palate. <laughs> That's great. I, I love that one. When you can put a wine down, and yeah. for several minutes afterwards, yeah. things cross the palate, and it's just absolutely Well, lovely. that's what makes a wine memorable as well, yes. that you're getting other stuff. It's not just your simple first impression that goes bang and hits you between the eyes. You, yeah. you think, all right, I've got that to start off with, but hang on, there's something else there as well. And that's, that's what draws you back to the bottle. It's what makes you say, well, I'll just be having another glass, and uh, we might just have to drink that for lunch, I think. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea, Pete. We'll Thanks, see you again next week.